So to begin doing that, I've simply dragged my brush through a dry paper towel and I'm picking up some of the cadmium yellow. We'll grab some of the tinting white as well. And let's look at the hair. So the hair is really quite pale on the right hand side of the head here. So it needs to be lighter than the colour I'm putting down, but we just want to get in the right ballpark to begin with. There's also some pale and bright colour here on the right. Over here on the left as well, down to the side of the cheeks. We can continue with this base layer of yellow as I go up, you know, to the left of the forehead. And then the hair gets really, you know, much darker up here. So I can kind of just stop applying the yellow for the moment. Now, having done that, let's grab some more of the tinting white and mix that thoroughly with a bit of colour I've still got left on my brush. And then once again, ensuring that that, that layer of yellow doesn't dry out. Let's look at the, at the reference again and work our way round, adding some of this lighter colour in. Now, rather than you know, be tempted to draw individual hairs or locks of hair, what I'm doing is just looking at the general texture of the hair and the general direction that it's falling in. And trying to pick out the big shapes and capture just the general sort of sense of movement and the way the hair falls kind of settles on the head so so we're not you know being lured into the trap of doing too much detail at this relatively early stage So once again, I simply dragged my brush through a, a dry paper towel. I haven't used any water to clean the brush. Um, and I'm just picking up some more of the tinting white. And if a little bit of the yellow on the brush kind of comes through, I don't actually mind too much. But what I'm going to do at this stage is just look at the dress and just gently drag some of this tinting white fairly lightly across the surface of the, the dry underlayer that I've got there. And in doing that, what I hope to do is begin to suggest the texture and all the different folds that are in the fabric of the dress. Again, without going into a huge amount of laborious detail. And if so, at the moment, none of the yellow is showing through, to be honest with you. But if it had, I wouldn't have minded because it's going to kind of echo the yellow that I've put into the hair. So. Yeah, but this. This sort of combo of colours, that's working reasonably OK, I think, to begin to suggest the, the shoulders of the dress. Now, while I'm here with the same colour on my brush, I can just use some of that to just tap in a little bit of light tone where we've got these earrings. obviously hanging on the ears, as you would expect. And now, having done that, I'm going to come in and work on the eyes and the mouth. So I've switched to a small filbert now, and I'm just taking some of the pure tinting white, and I'm going to apply that to the whites of the eyes. Now, um, if you've seen any of my previous portrait videos, you'll know that I typically use a little bit of blue in the mix because the whites of the eyes are seldom pure, pure white. And 
you know that's definitely the case here in, in my reference but because this tinting white is as I've mentioned a couple of times now it's a little bit transparent so you know some of this underlying orange is going to show through and, and it's not going to be a pure white which ends up on the painting even though that's all that's on my brush so I just wanted to see the kind of effect that I get by doing that uh, and also you know because I've gone over the blue watercolor marker some of that pale blue is kind of just being dragged into the, the brush stroke as well so for now that's okay so let's go back to the palette a little bit of the tinting white again but now I want some of the silurian blue and we'll mix that in to give us a, a fairly pale blue and I'll use that to just block in as a solid area of colour the iris on the right hand side here and we'll do the same for the other eye. And then within that light blue, there's there are darker areas of blue, so I can pick up some more of the Silurian blue and mix that into what I had already. And again, we don't need to go into a huge amount of detail at this stage, but there's a darker area of blue there, a darker area there. So that's begun to suggest the, the eyes with a little bit of light falling on them. And while we're up uh, in this area of the face, I may as well do a little bit of work on the eyelids and the eyebrows as well. So I'm going to grab, go back into this kind of purple colour I have and add just a little bit more of the alizarin. And let's put that in for the uh, colour for the upper lid. Now there's a little bit of highlight on the upper lid there, but you know I'll come back and do that at a, at a later stage. But in doing that, that's just helping me to kind of begin to define the eyes a little bit more clearly. And that colour be an imperfect but you know reasonable first step to the base layer for the eyebrows now we can add a little bit more blue a little bit more alizarin I've just added probably too much there let's grab a touch of that yellow and then let's put that in darken parts of the brows. Now while that's on my brush, let me just zoom out on my reference a little bit, what I can do is use that same colour, this wasn't what I was intending to do, I will come to the mouth in a moment, but what I can do is use some of that to begin to put in some of the shadow areas within the hair. So again, these colours, they aren't, you know, right in terms of a hyper-realistic representation, but in terms of a tonal you know, approximation they're not too far out and that's all I need for the moment Okay, so that same colour I can use to just uh, pull out the line of the, uh, the necklace a little bit there as well. 